It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And we've got a showdown in the NFC South. It's going to be a good one. And it kicks off next on Madden NFL 25. Well, folks, it is always a celebration here in New Orleans, and we are just outside of the Hoppin' French Quarter at the Caesar Superdome. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. Kickoff just moments away. Charles, quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. Here's the former Illini kicker, Chase McLaughlin, to get us started. And we are underway from the Superdome. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Saints heading out for the first time, and there's Derek Carr at quarterback in his 11th NFL season now and second in black and gold. And Carr continues to produce good numbers on paper. He completed over 68% of his passes last season while also throwing 25 touchdowns to just eight interceptions. But as impressive as those numbers are, the numbers he's seeking, big numbers in the playoffs. And we expect him and his team to be back in the playoff mix when January rolls around. Right to the air is Carr. And he'll get this one underneath to Kamara. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. Third and seven now. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense. Exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. From the gun now on third down, Carr. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, you want to make sure that on an opening drive, that you at least stay out there for a while and get into the flow of the game. A three and out would have been problematic, but that's a good throw there to ensure they get another set of downs. They'll run it for the first time with Alvin Kamara. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Second and 10. Again, it's Kamara. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Here is third down and four. And the slot man goes in motion left. From the gun, it's Carr. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 31-yard line. A gain of 18 and a new set of downs. Really a solid start here on the opening drive, Charles. He's now 4-4, and they're already in plus territory. Brandon, he's been so precise to start this game. Like we're watching an operation taking place right now. Master Surgeon at work. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. 
I think that's how this defense is going to need to play these tight ends. Again, get right up on them and stay physical. And that paid off on that play, helping force that incompletion. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. He'll drop to throw. Wilson's got it complete. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. That's good for a first down, his second catch of the opening drive. What a drive this has been, just chewing up the yardage. And here's one of their best plays yet as they finally get down into the red zone and look to finish this off with six. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. They'll send the tight end in motion. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. But that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. Second down, and it's Kamara again. And here he'll get it down to the seven. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center, because remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion. And sometimes you get that big guy on your nose. You got sometimes where he's coming at you at an angle. It's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute his block. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll make it third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. It's been a pretty long opening drive. This will be play number 11 coming up on third down. Now a play fake, Carr, and he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. Yaya Diaby, he's the one who got in there. He gets the sack. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. And his kick here is good. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. So the opening drive does yield points. Maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. The medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Now Mayfield and the Bucs come up on first and 10 at their own 26. They'll try and start this drive in the air. It's caught. This is White. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive, and he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. In motion, the tight end. Now Mayfield. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And Godwin going to have a box first down as the tackle made at the 42. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Godwin with a nice grab there, and he's been a consistent weapon for this Buccaneers offense, although a bit unheralded. 
He's eclipsed the 1,000-yard mark for each of his last three seasons, and his ability to make plays on all three levels is invaluable for not just his franchise, but his quarterback, Baker Mayfield. And he'll be taken down at about the 45. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call, mark off the five, and keep it moving. Now they'll try to take advantage of that offsides call. Here's first and five. Mayfield to throw it. The pass is caught by Kate Otten. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. When the offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, Tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Mayfield looks to throw. He's got White here. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. The Bucks passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but... He's a good pass catcher, and that's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because... Number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash, dropped at the one. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellows up front. White. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, maybe you get a guard to help double-team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. Here's Mayfield. And it's caught. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Co-Keefed from a yard out. And the Bucs have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead. Well, down in this part of the field, CD, they love to get him the football. And right there, a little pitch and catch for the score. Yeah, and he's such a weapon when it's that close to the end zone. And they love being able to rely on him to make those kind of catches. Talk about trust, talk about confidence, and he produces. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. He's got it. They'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it 7-3. to three. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays, and it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal, and I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. 
Yeah, not out and out joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit even though they wanted the six points. Yeah, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Now Carr. There's Chris Olave. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. It'll be a Saints first down on the pickup of 13. But I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Kamara up the middle. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. Two yards on the pickup there. Third and seven now. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Throwing now is Carr. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Yaya Diaby. Now two sacks for him already here in this first quarter of play. Even keeping the back end for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from New Orleans. It's the Saints in possession as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Baker Mayfield leads the offense out for their next possession. The returns on the last drive, pretty good. Seven for seven, touchdown pass. Probably take that, right? I would say so. I mean, when you're cutting them apart that way, feeling so accurate, so confident going downfield, and then able to culminate by putting it in the end zone, oh, yeah, he's feeling real good right now. Now he'll try to carry that over to this drive. They start to drive with White. Wiggles free. And he's brought down, but not before a really nice stiff arm to create a little space. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. Second down and four. Mayfield. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. And they were backed up to start the drive, but not anymore. Now, that's the play call that the offensive coordinator had in his head. You saw the end result. He wanted to go ahead and push the ball downfield, and that's what they did. And they wound up with good yardage there to get things rolling. First down, here's White. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Tackle made by Chase Young. 
Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding him to no gain. They go with White on the counter. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and ten. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A big play there on the catch and run. And it'll move the chains. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. To throw Mayfield. It's caught by Mike Evans. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it's second down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. From the gun, Mayfield. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Defensively, celebration time because they finally forced an incompletion. He was perfect throwing the ball to that point. Yeah, but from his viewpoint, they didn't force the incompletion. He just missed. That's how hot he is right now, and that's how he wants to continue to throw the ball. And again, it's Mayfield. There's a short one taken in by Otten. And this won't be enough. Stopped a yard short after a gain of three. Fourth down. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down, but the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle, and they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. to So a nice kick there as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Just a lone field goal for him so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10. Card out of throw. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Credit the sack to Vita Vea. He continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. These sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Now Carr. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. 
And this drive is almost over before it began thanks to a great defensive effort. Sack on first down, followed by an incompletion. One more good rep, and they get off the field. The Saints on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and forever. Open man left side. Shaheed has it. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here comes the Saints punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. No return, but it goes down as just a punt of 31 yards. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. The Buccaneers in good field position here to start out first and 10 at their own 42. The drive starts with a run by White. And he'll be taken down at about the 45. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle. And that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second down and seven. And they'll send the tight end in motion here. Mayfield now. And there's a short one taken in by Otten. He's up over 50 yards receiving now in this first half. It's a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. In motion goes the tight end. Play fake, Mayfield. Evans has it left side. And he's got this down to the 35. So that flag obviously takes away the good yardage that they had on the play. And talk about a momentum shift because we can visibly see this celebration shifting from one side of the field to the other as soon as everyone saw the flag. It's a big play yet amazingly because of how far they had to go. They're still looking at a second down here. Of course the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second and three. Now a give up the middle. This is right. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Four yards the pick up. First down. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They keep it on the ground, wide again. He stiff arms him. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. And they'll send the slot in motion left. Throwing, Mayfield. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Trey Palmer, 29 yards. And the Buccaneers have taken a two-touchdown lead now. The defense is doing their best, but they're struggling right now. They'll look for some help from their own offense to keep them in the game. McLaughlin for the extra point. Yeah. 
It's up and good, and that makes it 17-3. A drive that time of six plays, and it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. It gets this complete to Shahid. And he's going to be dropped following a pick up a seven past the 30 to the 32. They'll operate from the 32 yard line here, second and three. Carr. And he'll get this one underneath to Kamara. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. That'll be taken in by Shahid. And he is going to lose yardage here. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. And that was a heck of a play there on the outside. Partner, sometimes I think on a play like this as a corner, you've got to think to yourself, all I've got to do is slow him down so others can come over and support. But in this case, he said, forget that. I've got this. Sorry you had to make the run for nothing, fellas. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Here's Carr. He finds his man, Johnson. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Now this one taken in by Alave. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Just need a yard here, second and one. Here's Carr to throw. That's Alave bringing in another one. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Now, car again. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. Second down and a little more than a yard here. In motion right is Wilson. Carr going to throw. And that will be incomplete. 
Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. And that's where you're counting on a receiver's size being an advantage. They were hoping he could go to the top of a smaller DB and haul that one in. A good thought, but that time it didn't work out. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Again, they'll throw with Carr. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. And his kick is indeed good. And a second field goal here gets him back with an 11 now. It's 17-6. to six. So they get the three. It was fourth and one. And yeah, I think you were doing what I was doing. I was looking down at the sideline. I'm not sure the offensive unit wanted the three. They wanted to go for it. But when have we ever seen a unit that didn't want to go for it in that situation, That's true. right? Sometimes it's just way more important to have the points on the board than to worry about any type of a gamble. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. A one more drive here for the Buccaneer offense in this first half. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. A little over 20 seconds remaining in the half as they'll line up here first and 10. Now Mayfield. Going across the formation, there's Otten with it. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Working out of the gun. Mayfield. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Mayfield looks to throw. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Going to the air again with Mayfield. Airing this one out for Evans. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. He's put up numbers in this one by pushing the envelope a bit whenever he could with deeper throws. Let's play a little philosophy here. Some plays it works. Sometimes they're ready for you. And that time, they were on guard. Incomplete. A fourth down. Here's Jay Camarda on to punt for the box. Deep for New Orleans is Rashid Shaheed. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Buccaneers out on top. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Bucs with the lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway. And 
And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Buccaneers offense and Baker Mayfield set to take over once more. And as we show you some of the highlights from earlier, he has been instrumental in getting his guys the lead as he looks to finish strong and close this one out. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. Hey, Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it. But I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities. And I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Palmer going in motion right. Mayfield. Over the middle complete. It's Palmer. And a six-yard game gets him right around the 43. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. Mayfield to throw it. And there's a short one taken in by Otten. Only able to gain a couple there. And now two yards to go on third down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. It's caught. This is White. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Running out of the gun with White. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Oh, and the hard count might have got him. This might be a first down. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. To throw, Mayfield. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive. But a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Here's second and ten. Here's Mayfield. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection.
On third down, he'll drop to throw. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Alante Taylor. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, here in this third quarter, the whole complexion of the ball game flips on a dime there, CD. This is back to a one-score game. And sometimes when your offense is sputtering, you as a defensive unit have to take it upon yourselves to say, we've got to go out there, maybe take a few chances along the way, and see if we can generate some points ourselves. And lo and behold, they were able to deliver. So now the Saints offense coming back out there. They're going to be called on to go for two. And he's not going to get in as a try for two comes up empty. So they will be unable to cut this to a field goal as the differential remains five. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Oh, a good looking return set up here. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Buccaneers offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more. And he's been a nightmare to scheme against throughout this one. This defense has been totally taken apart. And that is borne out in his numbers. He's been terrific all game long. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six. So we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. And sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. From the 38 now, here's a second down and four. They'll go up the middle with White. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. They'll send the tight end in motion. Mayfield down. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. Short completion, just four yards, and that'll make it second down. They will run with White out of the shotgun. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. The completion on first didn't get much, and now the run on second doesn't get a whole lot either. Well, if you're a good play caller, you've already looked ahead and anticipated this type of situation. Already down in his play sheet, trying to dial up a big third down play. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 33. 15 yards there on the catch and run. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him, picking up the first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Finding Otten once more. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. 
Cade Otten. 33 yards. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. So the drive there took six plays. And Kate Otten capped things off with a touchdown grab. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Hill shedding the tackle. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And they have had their problems moving the ball through the air as we take you through some of the action from earlier. This secondary has played about as well as you can. Many times they've left this quarterback with nowhere to go with the football. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. Trying the left side with Camaro. And he'll manage only a couple here up to the 25. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Finding Johnson on the out route, that's complete. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. It's just a 30-yard punt that time, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The visitors' offense and their quarterback headed out for this next possession. And he had it going in the first half, that's for sure. He's really had his way with his secondary. They've been powerless to stop him. And he'll look to keep it rolling right here. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated grooves. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. He gets this one to Johnson. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. 
throwing Mayfield. He's got his target. That's complete. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Receivers love having the reputation of being go-to guys on third down. And he was fighting like he really wanted to have that reputation, didn't he? I mean, he came very close to making that a first down. Broke the one tackle, but couldn't spring himself free. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 15-yard line. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 16. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. The ball is out. Kamara fumbled it. Room past the 35. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Wow. That ball gets knocked free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Throwing now is Carr. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Wilson. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. The Saints passing game in sync and moving the football. It's a first down. A couple of first downs right in succession. And this is an offense that can really use a good drive. And they're off to a fast start here. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Card out of throw. It gets this complete to Shahid. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Well, so far, little to no resistance by the defense on this drive alone. Three passes, three completions, three first downs. They're taking it to them, and it's paying off. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Saints who hold the football, but they're trailing as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Now, Carr again. Open man left side. Shahid has it. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll bring up second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. They'll pound it up the middle with Kamara. And a nice run. They're going to take this close to the first down marker at the Bucks 16. It's a five-yard game, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. Well, so far, this game has gone the way the defensive coordinator had hoped. They've dictated things. They've not let them run the ball very well at all. They gave up a nice game there. I doubt it'll back off their confidence. They've played so well throughout this entire game. Carr going to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Saints are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert there on third and one. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's Carr. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Alvin Kamara taking it in. And the Saints have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. 
Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. It oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. A point after, good by Groupie. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Back now comes Tampa Bay. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. Godwin, the motion man. Now Mayfield. He finds his target. It's Evans. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. In motion left, Godwin. Mayfield looks to throw. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And Godwin going to have a box first down as he's up to the 45. It's a pickup of six. They defer to White out of the shotgun. Well, they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. 53 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it and not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Nathan Shepard in there to make the tackle. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula, just keep the ball on the ground, keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you've got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. Mayfield. That's completed right side to Palmer. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 20-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. In motion left here, one of their tight ends. Mayfield to throw it. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And the Buccaneers are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the 7-yard line. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Here's White. 
And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time to make sure you get in shape. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal to throw Mayfield. And he holds it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Trey Palmer with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Buccaneers get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. Well, that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you're taking me into that deep water now. Win probability index. This game's definitely not over. We're not looking at a half percent or something. It's just two scores. But the way that this team has played, to me, what I've seen, they absolutely deserve to win this game. They've been the better team by far throughout. McLaughlin for the extra point. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. So that drive consumes nine plays, all told. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10. Just shy of the 30. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Pitch and catch to Moreau, the tight end. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's second down. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. So just three yards on the completion there, and now it's third and four. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose, and boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. The Saints on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and four. Now Carr. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Again, they'll throw with Carr. Over the middle and complete to Shahid. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 12 yards there, good for a Saints first down. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. Yaya yeah, Diaby. Who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. 
This defense, they just continue to feast. Five sacks now as a unit. It's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback. And we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well. Sometimes just the guys up front getting to them. Other times you add extra guys rushing the quarterback, twists and stunts. It's been a variety, and they've had no way of blocking them. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Here's second down and three. Carr. Throw right side into the hands of Foster Moreau. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 13-yard line. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. All three timeouts remain, but they've got to score quick. It's first and ten. Again, it's Carr. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Here's second and a yard. Here's Carr. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. The nice thing is that you've still got all your timeouts in the middle of the field. That should still be an option, especially if you see the defenders pinching the sideline. You can run a little seam route right here and pick up some nice yardage. Here now, third down. Carr. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Cedric Wilson from four yards out. And the Saints have cut it back within a score. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right. And if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Groupie able to add the PAT. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. A little less than 90 seconds to go. This will be an onside kick. And the Buccaneers able to recover. Their hands team does its job. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it. But even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. The visitors' offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And this defense might be about ready to wave the white flag. Nothing they have tried to throw at him has been that successful. He just processes things so quickly and makes the right read seemingly every time. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They run straight ahead here with White. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down.
He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. They need to get this to the 24 on third down. Here's Mayfield. That is caught. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Victory formation now for the Buccaneers. Down to a knee they go. Down to one knee goes Mayfield, and that's all she wrote. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, ha, <laughs> happier day. I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. What a finish in this one, Charles. You know, this group, they come in, they have to fight a hostile atmosphere every snap. They get the late score, they get the victory, and that flight home, it's going to be a little sweeter after this one. And Brandon, just like you, I was fired up for that last sequence. How about that? Wouldn't you have loved to have been in the huddle when they were mounting that game-winning drive? Big-time moment. No one shied away from it. They tuned out the crowd, kept their heads, and executed the way they needed to to earn that win. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. Till next time, we say so long from the Bayou.